Good morning, church. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord than anywhere else in the world. Amen. This is a term break, and we all go out for holidays to be with our family and children, having some restful, relaxing time. It is always good to do that because we can have a good conversation that can happen in a different place and enjoying seeing the nature around and always looking after one another because we do not have much to do outside so we can look after one another we can have more personal conversation during the holiday time so it is good always to go out and have a wonderful time together as a family above all being in his presence, even in the holidays. Spend some time in the evening with the family together in a different place, worshiping, praying, reading the word. That gives something completely different understanding. Being in his presence is always good. I would like to show this picture as a call to worship this morning. We all have seen sheep in our life. How many of us have gone to a farmhouse and have really touched that or in the green field and touched and stroked the sheep? <laughs> oh, not many. <laughs> the only animal I am not scared is sheep. So I love, I love sheep. And whenever I see the sheep in the meadow, greeny valley, you can remember Psalmist says from Psalm 23. And always it comes to your mind, whenever you see the sheep, the Lord is my shepherd. We cannot forget that. And you know what? The sheep, they are very vulnerable animals. They are helpless. 
they cannot be on their own for a long time without a shepherd they always need someone to take care and another nature of the sheep is like they are like short sighted they cannot see the long the distant objects they can see only things around them whether it is advantage or disadvantage we will come to that later and they are not like uh, do not have camouflage they do not defend themselves with their sharp claws or sharp hooves or nothing like that they are very soft and tender their dependency is much about the shepherd and one thing we can notice they always follow one after another and they are known like if a sheep is falling off from a cliff the other sheep will be falling down they do not know what they are doing they just follow the crowd somehow jesus has compared that sheep to us his people can't have a long plan we cannot see it is good that we cannot see our long time future only then we can depend on the shepherd jesus and we are we cannot protect ourselves we need to depend on him he is our protector he runs behind us even if we go away from him he chases us with full of love and he comes and embraces us and he brings us back to the pen beautiful savior we have jesus is our good shepherd you can take uh, the bible just beneath your table and turn with me with the john chapter 10 john gospel chapter 10 verses 7 to 18 we are going to read it together if you are able you can stand and we can read the verses between 7 and 18 together in the church bible it is in the page number 1076 chapter 10 verses 7 to 18 let's read together Therefore Jesus said again I tell you the truth I am the gate for the sheep all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers but the sheep did not listen to them I am the gate whoever enters through me will be saved he will come in and go out and find pasture the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy i have come that they may have life and have it to the full i am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep the hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep so when he sees the wolf coming he abandons the sheep and runs away then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep i am the good shepherd i know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and i know the father and i lay down my life for the sheep i have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen i must bring them also they too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd the reason my father loves me is that i lay down my life only to take it up again no one takes it from me but i lay it down of my own accord i have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again this command i received from my father 
Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And Jesus says, I have laid down my life for the sheep. For our sake, he laid down his life. We have a wonderful shepherd. And now we are going to sing the song based on Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd. When he is my shepherd, do I lack anything? Do I need anything else more than what he has planned already in my life? He knows what to provide. He knows how to protect. He knows where to lead me. In that trust alone, let us sing this song. The Lord is only one, my shepherd. Let's sing. comfort world. We face so many struggles in our lives. We need comfort. 
we need someone to come and care for us we need some reassuring words again and again whispering into our ears that someone is there for us he alone can be jesus he has promised that he will be with us till the end of the age he will go before us he will make the path straight he will walk beside us he will lead us to the quiet still waters whatever the discomfort whatever the trouble we face in this world in his comfort we will be satisfied we need him we need him desperately he is not only the good shepherd and that is not only the good news for us he said i have chosen the cross for you you do not need to carry your cross you do not need to go through the punishment what you deserve i take that punishment i have taken that so i will go before you you can always depend on me let us sing this song you chose the cross lord for my sake love us more than Christ loved us Christ loves us Christ keep on loving us he sacrificed himself who would do that love for us who can walk up to that he alone he is our love this sunday he is calling us to love him more than what we have loved up to this point let's love love the lord 
with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind with all our strength he is our love even before we loved him he loved us whatever he can offer because of that love he offered to us let us say together we love you jesus shall we 1 2 3 we love you jesus because of the love because of the care and comfort as a good shepherd he has shown us we can keep trusting him we can put our hope in him he is our hope he is our cornerstone he is there for us our building our basement is built strongly upon jesus the firm foundation we will not be shaken the rain may come the flood may come up the wind may blow but we will not be shaken because our foundation is on jesus let us sing this song with hope filled heart and mind
Sometimes we put appearance, we cover ourselves, smile on our face, maybe saying to one another, I am good, I am fine. We are all so vulnerable. Every one of us go through a kind of storm in our lives. For some, it may be a small wind-like storm. For some, it may be like a tsunami storm. Everyone goes through different storms. None of us are exempted from all these struggles that we go through in our life. Let us take a couple of minutes in silence. Uplift whatever the storm we are going through to him alone. Let us say that storm. Let us tell him in, again in our prayer, this quiet time, Lord, this is the storm I am going through. You keep me safe. You give me deliverance. You provide whatever I need to hold on when I am going through the storm. Let us take a couple of minutes in silence. And then we will sing that chorus alone, Christ alone, my cornerstone. Heavenly Father, as your faithful people, we come together this morning, uplifted, our stormy situation before your eyes now. Thank you, Lord, for looking into that storm. Thank you, Lord, for giving us strength to go through that storm. Thank you, Lord, for carrying us in your arms when we are walking through the storm. Thank you, Lord, that you will take us to the end of the storm. Thank you for going to deliver us from all these stormy things one day. When we see you coming down with the full of acclamations of praise, trumpet sounding, the archangels proclaiming your good news. We all will be joined together. Until then, Lord, we need you to be our rescuer. We need you to be our redeemer. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Christ alone, Please be seated. I would like to call uh, Brian. Uh, he is going to come and share with us about Unlock the Walk, who are all able to walk. Let us decide today and uh, join this Unlock the Walk. Good morning, church. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all fit. I hope you're all eager to join me on Saturday the 27th of April. That was something like three weeks yesterday on the Unlock Walk. Last year, we had 23 people, which was brilliant. And we had two very young people, Jay and Joanna, came, walked all the way around, without pushchair or anything, running and involved in it. And so I'm challenging you to take them and I hope, hope this is going to work. So uh, just to remind you, 
Adelok was founded in 1972. That's before Ruth and I came to this church. Uh, they're now based in Rotherham, but they basically work in cities and they work to try to encourage Christians who live in inner cities where it can be very lonely and very difficult to tell about the Lord Jesus. And so they have some trained people and development workers that go and gather together some local Christians and they work in that area over the years. And, and one of the churches that we'll visit uh, on the 27th, where there will be a display about Unlock. Um, it's a very important charity, in my opinion. Uh, and it's interdenominational. So we'll visit different, different churches. So these are the 23 people that came last year. I know you can't see them all, but um, that, that was really good. And that, and that was uh, around Thamesmead. So where are we going this time? We're going into West London and we're going to take the tube to White City and we're going to walk in a circular route. And um, I don't know if you can read what it says there, but um, at the bottom right hand one, we're going to go quite close to the Grenfell Tower. And apparently there's a wall where people have put memories on it, which we'll be able to see. And quite near to that is what's an iconic tower called the Trellick Tower, which I think is absolutely awful. But architecturally, it's one of these iconic buildings. Okay, so it's a concrete monolith, in my opinion, but you can make your own decision. We'll be walking along the Grand Union Canal. We'll be going very close to Wormwood Scrubs Prison. But there is a park just outside it, so we won't be visiting anyone inside. Uh, and we'll end up probably near the old TV television centre in, in West London. Um, so, incredibly, we're going to be touching four different boroughs, Kensington, Chelsea, Hammersmith, and Fulham. I can't quite work out how we get, managed to get four, but they all join together somewhere. That's what it says in the literature. Uh, and we're going to go through or near to Westfields, not our Westfields, but the one in Shepherd's Bush. And then, as it says there, you can read the rest, I've told you. There'll be seven churches, and they'll explain how they share the gospel in their particular area. We'll have fellowship together. There's a quiz every year, about 20, 21, 22 questions, which keeps the interest up, helps the youngsters to go around and see if they can find out the clues. Um, and... Uh, it's an opportunity of having real good fellowship together. Bring a pat lunch, and most importantly, rain, hail, snow, fine, or whatever, we're going. Okay, one year it snowed, and that was in April. But it isn't going to snow this year, I don't think. <laughs> um, so, in the middle foyer, I have put up a signing in sheet. Uh, the plan is for to start and arrive here eight, between 8.30 and 8.40. You can come by car and leave in the car park or just come. We're going to leave the church at quarter to nine and walk to Gants Hill Tube. If you want to, you can meet us at Gants Hill, but I need to know where you're going to meet us so I can look out for you. Uh, some people like to meet us at Redbridge. Other people have been to Stratford because they come on the, on the Elizabeth line. Wherever you want, sign up and let me know and then I can look out for you. Okay, so I hope to be at White City just before 10 o'clock, okay? And I have checked the tubes and there isn't any tube work that day as of yet. If you're not able to go, and I ex understand there'll be a lot of people not do, please pray for us. And if you feel the Lord leading to you, uh, we do collect money and we send a donation to Unlock. And um, if you'd like to, give it to one of the walkers and we can include it in, in Asher's. Right, I've got two extra slides here. So I would like Jay and Joanna to tell me what these are. Anyone knows what they are? They're plants, aren't they? When do we sow them? About the end of January, I think, as part of Sunday school. And it's taken ages for them to grow, but now, there's a picture of two 
and there's a picture of three of them. There's another couple in my porch, okay? It'll be about another four to six weeks before we can plant them out in church. So, I shall need some volunteers to help planting them out in the church garden. There's probably going to be too many, so I'm sure there'll be opportunity of children to take some home and they can plant them in their garden, okay? There were two varieties of seeds, antirhinums and salvias. I haven't got the foggiest what these are, but I think they're antirhinums. But that should just be a surprise, because <laughs> they all got mixed up. My fault. Anyway, uh, so that's something else. I thought I'd show that while I was here. So please, if you're interested in the Unlocked Walk, I have got some literature. I have got um, a map, but I mean, I can give it to you when, when we go on the 27th. But please, if you've got any questions, come and ask me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brian, for arranging this Unlock the Walk again this year. Enjoyed thoroughly a like, couple of years. Wonderful time. Visiting different churches, and they provide about their church details, their church history, and where it is located, how long they have been worshipping, their architecture, beautiful. And I truly enjoyed with uh, Jay and uh, Johanna last time. So this week, we are again. How long is going to be that walk, Brian? How many miles, roughly? Seven miles. Seven and a half. We can walk, isn't it? Yeah, and we were fit after that, isn't it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thanks for the Sunday school gardening, Brian. It's coming up. It is a trial run. And if it works, it has worked already. We are going to do some uh, other Sunday school gardening in the church garden, and we can harvest it and bring it to our harvest festival next year, Brian. Something. I'm always depending on gardening to Brian. Thanks, Brian, again. And I would like to call now Faye to give us some more notices. Right. Morning, church. Uh, most important, most important one is that after today's service, there is the members meeting to be held back here in the sanctuary. So as soon as we've finished teas and coffees, I'm back here so we can get the meeting started. Tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock is New Horizons, and the title is "Is Britain a Democracy?" So come along and see and at two o'clock here. And prayer meeting will be on Friday the 19th of April, and it will start at 7.30 in Amuta's office. Then Saturday the 27th... We can't have a prayer wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'll scrub that one out. <laughs> oh, we won't have a prayer walk on the 27th. <laughs> um, I've had a message come through from Ilford Hospital Chapel. They've got some open days coming along. There's one on the 11th of May, one on the 13th of Ju July, and they've got a whole weekend on the 21st and 22nd of September. And they're looking for volunteers. Um, I'll keep the people's names with me with their telephone numbers, but if you feel like you can volunteer, come and see me and I'll give you the telephone numbers. Thank you. Thanks, Faye. As a continuation to our worship, let us collect our offerings and I can see some uh, new people here. I welcome you all to this service and to God's sanctuary in his name and I would like to talk to you after the service. We'll catch up in the coffee time.
Kylie will pray for the offering now. Well, I, I thank you uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, 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 Thank you for this money, Lord, and we use it for your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Today is a special service, isn't it? Yeah? All age service. So normally, all age service, it would be a very interactive one. So you will be preaching, I will be listening. No, we do it in the interact. <laughs> he is ready for that. We are ready, Jay, good. Yeah, and before we get into the Bible reading, he is our reward. Christ is our reward. And how can we miss that? We do not want to miss the reward we received. So we always say that, Lord, I hold on to you. I will never turn back. Always I follow you. How can I miss you? Let us stand and sing this song before we go to the Bible reading.
Please be seated. Kevin will bring the Bible reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Good morning, church. Today's reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Um, and in the church Bibles, it's on page 1160. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6, on page 1160 on the church Bibles. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This is the word of God. Thank you, Kevin, for bringing this Bible passage to us. This morning, we are going to talk about the good news. Again, it is an all-age service, so this is going to be, as usual, more interactive. So I want to hear from you all. When was the last time you received the good news? And how did you feel about it? Haven't received good news at all in your life? Okay. Carolyn, Faye, if you are ready, think about it. When was the last time we received good news in our life? I received good news this morning. My uh, younger sister, who went on cesarean about an operation, he called me that it was successful. The baby in the Kubeto alive and are safe, and I sang praises before coming to church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a good news to start his day in this way. Yes, Faye. The good news was last Thursday. Um, we've been transferred from the Royal London Hospital to the local King George's Hospital for dialysis, which made me really, really happy. Amen. <laughs> Very close to home. Very, close. Very nice. Good news. Yes, Pavani. But good news was in January when uh, we were all looking for my brother to settle down and he got a job. So, yeah, in January. Good. Very good, isn't it? You were all happy and enjoying that. Any more good news? Yes, Philemon? My mom had a knee surgery and today morning she got discharged. So that was a good news for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. God works. He, always he is at work. Anyone else? Good news? Any good news to share? Wow. No good news. No good news? Yes, Bino, I'm coming. Yeah, think about it. We always receive some good news. Something good should have happened in our life. Yesterday, uh, Pratibha's mom had a fall, uh, but uh, luckily today she's all right and uh, she's able to well, so. Very good, very good. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Some, God protects us, isn't it? God cares for us. God answers our prayer. And good news. We all have good news. You're all celebrating term break, isn't it? That's a good news. One more week to go. Tomorrow you don't need to go to school. Kylie, yes, Kylie. Uh, I think uh, I think it was good news. Uh, I think uh, I think it was a good, happy, uh, for for ice bottle. 
Wow. Going to the hospital makes you good and healthy. Good and healthy, isn't it? You are looking so good. Better and better every day. Praise the Lord. Good news. We all have good news. Yes. Now, I want some volunteers. Without you, how can I do the all age service, isn't it? Who wants to come forward? We are going to talk about good news. If you come, there is a good news for you. Desire, young and old, no discrimination between gender or age. Nobody wants. Yes, Rihada, come. Come, come, come. Only two. JJ, yes, come. Good news. I tell you, you are going to miss something. You can see here, if you come, friend, you will receive it. <coughs> see? Yes? Yeah? We are coming to see where, what it is about, isn't it? Yeah? I need to check what is in what box. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I will try my best. In this box, we have something. Can you hear that? Yes. We have something. Yes. And I give you a clue. And you need to guess what it is. It is colorful. <laughs> it is colorful, yeah. Anything else you can guess? It is colorful. Markers? Markers? What is that? Markers. Coloring markers? Uh, no, you are close. Crayons, don't say colored pencils again. She has already said that. Okay. It's all coming under that category. Go for something else. Colorful. Uh, and you children, paint? you will enjoy it. Chocolate, sorry, not edible. It is paint. 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 Anything else? Colorful. You enjoy it. You see that at least once a year in your life. Anyone else? You can shout if you have fun. Don't, you can't. You packed this. Birthday candles. Martin, you are so, so close. Did you have a talk with Doni? No? You didn't talk with Doni Lata? Okay. Pavani said that. Yeah? I need to check. Okay. Anyway, they have guessed it. Really, I don't want anyone to guess it. <laughs> but this happens, isn't it? You are all clever people. You didn't expect this. Balloons. Yeah? Did you expect this? I want balloons. Yeah? You want balloon, isn't it? Did you expect this can, would be here? No, Unexpected I can, gift. I can you can join if you want. Yeah? I can blow up balloon. Blow up the balloon. But not now. I'll give you one. You take home, blow up the balloon, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Yeah? You want to take one each? One each? Yeah? How did you feel when you... Yeah, take one. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Emmanuel. Favorite color as well. Good. See, plenty available. Who is missing there? Okay. Good. Sometimes... The good news, oh, I want the good news. Yeah, can you please put the slide on? Sometimes the good news come in an unexpected way. You didn't expect it, but you guessed it rightly. It comes like that. If you are staying there, you won't get this good news. You have come, friend, and you received the good news. Another good news now. What is it? It's big. It's big. Yeah, it's you big. can see the box is big, isn't it? 
What is it? What is it, Emmanuel? A toy. A toy? What is it, Hosanna? It's a toy. It's a toy. <laughs> it's not a toy, sorry. But you can guess again, more and more. Is it edible? What's that? Is it edible? Edible. Good guess, it's not edible. Again, not edible because I'm is not sure allergy or anything else. Anything else? Is it a large box or something? Large box, not box. It's lengthy one. I can give you a clue. It's a lengthy one. So it's tall. Oh. Uh, Card. Thank God. You did guess this time. <laughs> Pencils? No, Matilda, sorry. Anything else? Sticky hands? Huh? Sticky hands? Sticky hands? I don't know what it is. It's something in the... Storybook. Uh, kids book, okay. Maybe possible, small book. Can I open it? Yes. Can't you wait, isn't it? You can't, you can't. You can't wait, isn't it? What is that? Oh, I had that before. You have that before. It's a slap band. Yeah. I'm not going to slap you. I give you one, you can slap yourself. Yeah, I'm going to take this one because I did it. So, okay, good. Yeah, take one. And it comes with the verse in it. Can you see the words in that? For me, it says, trust God even when he says wait. What a beautiful verse, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Trust God, even when he says, wait. Have you taken? Oh, Ozana? Sarah, have you got one? Sheba? Sheba? Yeah. Okay, good. There are some here. Whoever felt shy, you can come later and take one. Now, you all can go to your places. What about this? Just a support. <laughs> The good news, it comes sometimes in an expected way. We would have waited for a long time. It needs waiting is always associated with a certain period of time. And during that period, we may face some struggles or some difficulties. But at the end, when we receive the good news, it will be so impactful and meaningful. Unexpected, it does not involve with any time period. It happens all of a sudden. It comes from nowhere. It happens in a moment of time, unexpected. But still, the end of the good news, what we have received, it is impactful and it is meaningful. All these good news, what we shared now, they're all good. Everyday life, we face that. So all expected, unexpected good news, we can compare with the daily occurrences that is happening in our life. But all these good news are only for a specific period of time. It cannot be for a long-lasting one. It is not a long-lasting one. Only for a specific period. We are all writing exams. GCSC, A-level exams. Good. It's a good news, isn't it? <laughs> OK, you have to write. So it is a good news. The results are coming up. You are getting all yes for A level. Now, nine, yeah, GCSE, all top grade results. How do you feel? It's a good news. And after that, you are getting into the university you liked. Good news. You are studying what you were interested about. It's a good news. And then you are getting into a career, what you were really looking forward. Good news. 
and you are getting a salary, you are living your life, eventually, one day, you have to retire. Yeah? The retirement comes. How long is the good news? Maybe for a few years? Yeah? All these good news, what we experience on this earth, is for a certain period of time. Only for a specific period. One good news that we all celebrate as a believers is a long-lasting one. It is an eternal one, eternal celebration. That good news is what we are going to talk about this morning. What is good in the good news? We all know what is the good news that we are all called together this morning. Every Sunday we meet. That is the good news. And we shared in our songs, worship time, and we were singing songs about the good news. What is good in the good news? Is it justification by faith? Is that the good news? Justification is good because we can stand and approved by the Almighty One because of our faith in Jesus. What else? Is it forgiveness of sins? Forgiveness is good because all our sins are cancelled, which was keeping away from God for a while until we meet with Jesus. What else could be the good in the good news? Redemption from guilt? Jesus came, he paid the penalty so that we are liberated from doing any payment. Is that the good news? What else could be the good in the good news? Salvation from hell? Because Jesus came and he saved us for eternity. Is that the good news? Is that the good in the good news? Or eternal life? Because Jesus paved the way for us. We can go and be with the Lord forever and ever without any pain and without suffering. Is that the good in the good news? What is good in the good news? These are all like the outpouring effects of the core of the good news. There is something core of the good news. And these are all justification, salvation, redemption, eternal life. All these are all outpouring graces from the common core good news. What is that core good news? According to scripture, Jesus died on the cross. According to scripture, Jesus was buried in the tomb. According to scripture, Jesus was risen on the third day. These are all according to scriptures we read. What is good in that? And what good that is for us? Yes, we read in all the gospels, we celebrated the Holy Week, Easter celebration, Good Friday, we reflected. Everything happened. In all these events, what is good for us? What is good for me from that good news? We can't distance that. We read in scripture, it happened some time ago. People were talking about, some have come to faith because of that. It is all happening in a distant place. We need to personalize that. We need to think about, Jesus died for me. He was mindful of me. He knows who I am. He thought about me. And he put the crown of thorns over him for me. You can put yourself in that place. It is not happening somewhere in the history. It is not happening just for the gospel to be written. It is the gospel to me. He suffered. He went through all the pain and agony on that day. And he was crucified on the cross. He died. He gave his life for me. Who am I to him? 
Why should he be mindful of me? He loves me. He was buried in the tomb. The almighty God, God himself, came down from heaven. And was he to be buried in that way? In a tomb, on his loneliness, no one is there. What sin he has committed for him to be buried in that 33 and a half years around, in that cold tomb, in a rejected way, someone have insulted, mocked him, and he was there. Why? Is it for gospel alone? Is it for some preaching from the pulpit? Is it for just evangelizing from there? No, it is for me. For me, he was lying in Joseph's tomb. He was lying there in loneliness. He was there patiently waiting. He was there surrendering himself. It is for me. How precious am I in his eyes for him to take that death? He was rose again. It is not just to show the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not just to show to the world the evidence. Yes, Jesus told and it was fulfilled in that. It is all there, but it is for me. He rose again. Every time, we need to put ourselves in that place. Personalizing. For me, he died. We can carry that. Do we need anything good beyond that? Someone, God himself, came down, died, buried, and rose again for me. Do we need anything good beyond that? That is the good news. Jesus is the good news. And because of him, all these justification, salvation, redemption, and all forgiveness have been outpouring graces because of Jesus. Jesus himself is a good news for us. We can cling on to him. We need Jesus in our life. When we, Jesus comes and resides in us, we experience all these blessings. And more than that, he brings so many gifts to us. He looks after us. He cares for us. He is our shepherd. He says, seven, I am. I am the gate. I am the resurrection. I am the bread of life. Come to me, those who are all weary and burdened. I will give you satisfaction. He is the good news. Jesus is the good news. Who is Jesus? Who is he? Do we see him just as a messenger? Do we see him like, yeah, 2,000 years ago, God sent him, he came and lived somewhere in Israel. He walked around and he did all these preachings, healing, and all those prophecy about the kingdom coming. Is that what we see in Jesus? Who is he? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 and 6. It clearly shows who he is. The God of this age, that is, the Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, those who are still standing outside, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Verse 6, Paul writes again to Corinthians, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displays in the face of Jesus Christ. That is Jesus. In Jesus, we see the image of God. Jesus shines the glory of God. So Jesus is God. He is not just a second person in the uh, coming. He is not just who came down and the mission accomplished and went back. He is God. And that God himself decided, my people need salvation. 
my people need me so let me go down in this way and take myself as a good news and people receive need to receive this good news need to receive jesus as their personal savior need to experience the love he brings to us need to see and grow along with him in the knowledge of christ and that can happen only to those who are called and chosen and we are really enjoying the joy that we have received that's why in thessalonians chapter 5 this is the theme verse of our church this year rejoice always when we receive jesus as a good news in our life how can we stop rejoicing how can our tongues be tied up can't we completely entirely in our whole life can't we be saying his glory and rejoicing in his salvation we can't stop praying because jesus is standing in us with us living in us so we will be praying continuously non stop because he is our ultimate source we can always depend upon him and thanking him for all things he has done in all our circumstances this is the will of god for us to have that joy for us to pray continuously for us to thank him in all circumstances sometimes the good news in our life may be delayed i got that statement here you have to wait even when you are waiting trust in the lord that is the good news after all these things occurred in history can't we trust in him if he could rise from the dead if he could die for our sins if he could silently settle in the buried tomb for a while can't he deliver us from all our daily difficulties and struggles he is able we need to trust in him if we believe that he is able we will be constantly rejoicing we will be thanking him always we will be turning to him in prayer we do not depend on him because he is a good news but still the good news is received by the believers those who have accepted christ but some have backslided why is it happening why backsliding happening people those who have worshiped the lord jesus before now have turned back why what happened in between possibly they say one statement three statements one of the statements they say that they are disappointed with god simply they say that they say if god is existing if god is powerful if god is love why then he allows suffering into this world why then there is evil in the world they ask this question and they answer to those questions saying either god is not good or god is not in control of all those things i would say we all would say now they haven't learnt about who jesus is they haven't experienced the good lord we have they haven't had a walk with the lord jesus in their daily life those people will be disappointed with god and they want god to be under their control they want god to be under their dictation and under their doubts even if people are doubting can they erase the existence of god they can doubt for a while but it is beyond that god exists yesterday today and forever no one can take him out from this existing world he is a creator of the world he is holding the whole universe so he knows what to do when to do things 
and how to do things. He is almighty. He is supreme. He is sovereign. It is this world he created. We are here to pray to him, to rejoice the salvation we have received, and we need to thank him continuously, not to question the almighty and powerful God. And not to be disappointed with God for all these what he has done in the scripture. No one can deny that. The power of the Holy Spirit is talking to us even today through his word. And people say that trusting in the Lord, think about Egyptian slavery. People those days were mourning that God has taken his hands off. What happened? He led them faithfully out of their oppression. What happened in the exile in Babylon? People would have said, oh, there is no such God existing because we are going through this suffering. What happened? He brought them to the promised land back after 70 years as he has promised. And people, after hearing from the prophecies and all those promises read from scripture, they say that ah, the Messiah is going to come. It is all like the story told for my own comfort. Has it been finished by that? No, the Messiah came down to this earth. And the Messiah himself said, I will die, I will rise again after three days. And people in that time, they were criticize, criticizing, asking questions, saying that it is all like some gimmicks. What happened? He truly rose again on the third day. We need to have faith in the Lord. We need to have that trust in God. Faith is trusting in the Lord in what he does, even if we do not understand everything about it. You are flying in an aeroplane. Do we all know the individual mechanisms that are in the aeroplane? Do we know how the flight is flying? But yet, we trust, we put our faith, and we travel. What about the medications we are taking in our life? Do we know the chemical reactions that is happening between the medicines we are taking and with our body? Do we know everything in clear about it? No, but still we trust in the doctors and we take the medication. God is above all these things. God is beyond the pilot. God is beyond the doctor. If he is the one who has created the world, why should we get disappointed with all his work? Some say they are disappointed with the Bible. They think that the Jonah story is a fairy tale. Some say even the Red Sea splitting, is it real? Is it not magical? People believe in magic, but they do not believe in miracle. They even question the Bible asking, is God truly loving? Is God truly embracing all community? If that is so, why he is condemning about homosexuality? People ask that question. Have you heard about it? More and more these days, we are hearing about that. In the early centuries, Gay and lesbian marriages were not easily accepted in the society itself. But now, after some time, people changed. They started living with the society. They are changing their view. And they say that, oh, this is fine. Why not? Living as you like. And they want God also to change his view. God is an unchanging God. What he said in the scripture, he always stands on that. What he said like man and woman need to be married and that is the wedding and what was he instituted, that needs to be everlasting. He cannot change with the time. He cannot change like people. He cannot change with the society changing. Society may change because of all these affluences and influences. God cannot change. So you cannot say, I am disappointed with the Bible. Bible is true. It is a living God, word. And we need to depend on that. And some say disappointed with the church. We need to remember, church is built with people. 
people are made of flaws. If you can tolerate your higher authority in your working place and know how to manage the managers, and even your colleagues are criticizing, judging you, and all those things, you know the tricks how to manage them. How come you say the church alone is not good? Why the church people are like that? Why they are not resembling Jesus? Why they are not reflecting the love of Jesus? You can't question that. We are made of flaws. We are all dysfunctional people. Church is for sinners, not for saints. So we have come together to hold one another in their difficulties. If they are someone is weak, we need to provide strength. If someone needs comfort, we need to provide comfort. If someone needs encouragement, we need to do that. Sometimes we need to be like sinks, receiving that and supporting one another. Some say that I am disappointed with the church leader. Fair enough, if the leader is speaking anything against the word of God, if the leader is twisting the word of God, if the leader is bringing a completely opposite doctrine, please better leave the church and go to a good church. We need to see whether we are standing on the word of God. All these disappointments. These days, people are so easy to say that. These are all the main and possible reasons. People leave the church. People say that, no, I'm, I don't believe in God. Ask to them. You know, one of these categories, they will be falling in. We need to pray for the community. We are rejoicing the good news we received. And people, those who have experienced the good news, they are leaving astray. That is very painful. And we are representing the ambassadors of Christ, being a good shepherd, going around and bringing the people back into his pen. Amen. We are now entering into our communion part of the service. Let us come in a meditative mode and we will take part in this communion. Now the communion slides will be appearing. We have received the good news. Jesus is with us. Jesus is the good news. We are rejoicing because of Jesus. All these worldly struggles and sufferings, he can help us to overcome that. Jesus himself is inviting us into this communion table. He is asking all those who are weak and weary, come and partake in this table. He has offered himself he says, come and share and be rejoicing in what you have received. Let us say this prayer of confession together before we break the bread. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for as rich as I may think that I am, I confess that I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love to all who call to you in their time of desperation and need. Hear my prayer. O oh Lord, listen to my cry for mercy. Amen. The Apostle Paul, on the same day, he is teaching us what he has received from Lord Jesus' Savior. He said on the night when he was suffered and died, he broke the bread 
and he gave thanks to the Lord. And he said, take it and eat it. This is my body pierced for you. On that same night, after the supper, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. He gave thanks again and he said, this is the cup sealed in the new covenant with my blood. So for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember my death and proclaim my death until I come back. This is the word of God. I would like to ask uh, the stewards, David Howard and Michael Hyams, to come and pray for bread and wine. And then the stewards will distribute the bread and wine together. Once we received it, we will all have it together. We'll have prayer for bread now. Yeah. Lord, our loving Father, we just thank you for this opportunity we have together to meet in your presence. We just thank you, Lord, that you just said that I am the way that also, but also we just thank you, Lord, that you said that I am the bread of life. I am the manna, the manna who came down from heaven. But whether the Israelites received that manna, they died. You said, I came to give life. And we just thank you for this life you've given us, Lord, this eternal life. And as we give thanks to you for this bread, we just thank you for all the things you've done for us. We just thank you for your mercy and your kindness and your generosities. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are such a wonderful God. Amen. Amen. We'll have a prayer for wine now. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful opportunity. We come, Lord, in this room, not as a church full of saints. Lord, we come as a room full of sinners. Nothing we can do, Lord, can take away the blood, the sacrifice of Jesus, his body broken on the cross, his body and his arms, his legs pierced. Not for what he has done, Lord, but for the guilt, for the guilt of us all here, people watching on YouTube, people who in the future will be watching on YouTube. Lord, we give you thanks for your perfect love. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And uh, once you receive the bread and wine, please hold in your hands and we will pray and then we'll eat together.
let us take the bread and wine remember that his body buried and died and rose again for us and we be thankful to him now and forever Let us say this prayer of thanksgiving together now. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you have richly fed and refreshed my soul. Help me to love you with all my heart, truly believe in you, and live according to your will. Finally, grant me your blessed and joyful end that I may live and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing this final hymn. During this time, the cups will be collected and the communion offering will be collected. If you have not brought, please do not worry. Just pass the bag to the person next to you. share our grace with one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. God bless you all. Have a coffee and we will meet there and then in 10-15 minutes we will come back for our members meeting. <laughs>